Hey guys, it's James, and do you want to create time lapses using your DSLR like this? I admit this was not a good time lapse. If you want to create exceptional time lapses, you not only need a good camera and a good lens, you need to understand photography, things like lighting, composition, using props, etc. This video won't cover that. Instead, this video will cover how to set up your DSLR. Now, I'm going to use my Canon T4i. However, any DSLR camera will work. You are going to need a transmitter like this on top of the shoe. Also, I suggest you get a dummy battery like this one because a lot of time lapses will go over 24 hours and there is a possibility that your battery will drain before the time lapse ends. If you have an extended battery, that may be okay. However, again, it depends on how long your time lapses will go. So yeah, I suggest you get a dummy battery. Also, I will be using my CR Tennis Pro to demo the time lapse. However, you can use any 3D printer out there. If you're not using the same transmitter as I am, and the same printer as I am, then you are going to have to 3D model your attachments. But that's what you have your 3D printer for. And there are many free 3D applications out there where you can model and design your attachments. I personally use Blender. If you're going to be using the same transmitter and a printer as I am, you can just download the STL files. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Now there are many different ways to make the time lapses. If you don't want to make the attachments for the transmitter, there is something called G-Photo 2 that you should look into. However, this video is not going to really cover that because there's going to be some compatibility issues with different DSLR cameras. Uh, you can actually go to their site and check out which cameras are compatible with the G-Photo 2. Now I think Octoprint works really well in taking time lapses. However, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to create time lapses without the use of Octoprint and the Raspberry Pi. So stick around to the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Also, if you need help on setting up Octoprint, uh, check out this video up here. So once you've installed Octoprint, you're going to go here to the wrench. Go down here to uh, the plugin manager. I've already have the Octolabs installed. That's why it's here, but you're not gonna have yours installed. You're gonna go to the plugin manager, go to the get more here, and then type in Octolabs. And then you're gonna uh, go ahead and install the plugin. Once that's done, you're gonna see Octolabs over here. You're first going to set up your printer. And I already have the CR Tennis Pro already uh, added. However, I'm just gonna do a new test printer. You're just gonna rename your CR10S Pro or whatever printer you have. You can actually add a description. I'm not gonna do that. And you're gonna choose your slicer settings. And depending on which slicer you have, uh, you're gonna select one. I'm using Cura, so I'm gonna select this one. Every setting that you have currently on Cura or your slicer setting, you're going to just input the exact same thing in here. So, fraction. Retraction enabled. Retraction distance is a 6. Speed is 50. Prime is 50 and then just type in speed and as you can see the print speed is 50 infill is 50 wall is 25 50 50 25 25 top bottom speed is 25 travel speed is 150 speed is 150 initial layer speed initial layer speed is actually slower i'm pretty sure speed
there's 20 and initial trial speed is 100 20 100 Bert. Trim speed, I have it at 20. Maximum. Hmm, not showing up. It might be that you have to activate the Z hop. And then you get the. Oh, here it is Z hop speed. There's five. And then. The number of slow layers this you can probably blank is the hop height 0 0.2 0 0.75 and then this enabled the auto detect position and the board snap went out of bounds enable that and then we have a printer tolerance position of 0 0.001 and I have a snapshot command of G4P1 and enable the suppress snapshot command when disabled etc and then all you do is save it again I already have it done so close and then we're going to go to Octolabs and then you're going to be able to choose your printer your profile again we just created it so to go ahead and do that and then the one that we're going to use is fix extruder at back right you can use any of these if you're not using the DSLR or if you use the G Photo 2 you can quite possibly use any of these however we're going to use the back right extruder at back right because each time the print head goes to the back right it's going to hit the transmitter button and that's why we have it at back right and then you can put it at G code and this you can change it to what you want is uh, frames per second so I have mine at 30 per second um, I have a T4i obviously this is not really applicable if you have a webcam you can use that too if you do use a webcam you can use any of these settings as far as this extruder being the right orbit animated any of that however since we're using a physical aspect of the print head actually hitting the button of the transmitter itself you need it at the extruder at back right and then for this to work you actually have to have the time lapse mode turned off and then again you're going to save all your changes and you're going to go here to extensions post processing modify g code and you're going to add a script search and replace just copy this from the description below and here we're going to put a g4 g1 and then use a regular expression it's just as dwell for a thousandth of a second now guys i told you i'll show you how to do the time lapse without octoprint and here it is it's very simple all you're going to do is go here to the post processing and instead of using g4p1 what you're going to do is add g0 f6000 x300 and y300 now this 300 uh, may be 301 or 302 depending on on how accurate your belt is in relation to the nub so it may be 301 and this right here is the speed of travel this is uh, millimeters per minute so the higher the value it's going to go faster and the lower the value it's going to go slower this is actually the travel speed. I think that F6000 is a very good speed to use. Slice it, save this to your SD card, and then print it via your SD card. However, if you plan on using OctoPrint with OctoLapse, yeah, you want to use the G4P1 command. 
because the plugin itself will move the printhead to the back right of the printer. And that's why you just want to use G4P1. When you want to skip using the Octolapse and Octoprint, manually put in the coordinates, like so. Very simple. We are going to home it. And then we are going to put 300. As you can see, as you can see, it does not activate the transmitter. Now, so what we're going to do is go right here, push the value of one millimeter so it's going to move in one millimeter increments and then we're going to go to 301 and as you can see 301 the red light is on which means that it hit the button at 301 and as you can see it's a little loose if you want you can just take the little filament right here When the time lapse is finished and all the pictures have been taken, you're going to have to transfer those images to your computer and find an application that can sequence those images into a movie clip. Now many people use Adobe Premiere, I use Blender, Blender is pretty much free and it can sequence the images very well. This is Blender and not only does it have a modeling tool, it has a video editing tool. Go here and add an image sequence. You're gonna select all the images and import them to the movie timeline. You're gonna go to the end of the clip and see where the last frame is. As you can see from here, it's 167. We're gonna input that to the end frame. And then we are going to render it by clicking here on the render animation. And I will probably be doing a follow up video on adding a DSLR with a G Photo 2. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if that kind of thing interests you. And as always, I hope this video helps you out. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like and comment and share. Uh, thanks a bunch.